how tax planning can really benefit you when you look at the big financial planning and retirement planning picture. All right, so I'm going to read you an email uh, from a man. I don't know his name, but he says, hey, uh, I've got a real world scenario for you. Not sure if you've covered H.M. Bradley. It's a fairly new online now account that pays him about three and a half percent with over hundred with uh, up to a hundred thousand bucks. So between his wife, uh, they have three accounts, each at a hundred a uh, hundred thousand bucks paying three and a half percent. Not too bad. And it's uh, FDIC insured. So there you go. That's pretty good. Now, 100%. Don't argue with that at all. Don't know the first thing about H.M. Bradley or Hank Hatch Bank, but uh, remember good stuff. Um, but he has a mortgage outstanding of 144000 which is at 1.8% interest rate. And so he says, uh, why would I pay off the mortgage at 1.8 when I'm making 1.7% more on the bank account? Hmm. And that's where we're going to take issue from it. So first and foremost, we're just going to say, I'm going to assume he roughly had a $300,000 mortgage. He's basically in year 16 of his mortgage payment, so he's below the... Uh, the top half of this is so we basically we're looking at the we're going down the precipice we're going down the mountain so to speak so i'm going to say a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage 500 bucks for every hundred thousand you you borrow so essentially it's costing 1500 bucks a month roughly i'm not including in, uh property tax or homeowners insurance we're just including principal and interest all right so first foremost just put that to the side we know it's 1500 bucks monthly i don't know i'm expect, I'm, 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 I'm estimating it's 1500 dollars a month is his monthly payment all right so now he's got uh, 144 thousand dollars so we're going to pay 144 thousand dollars at 1.8 versus 144 thousand dollars at three and a half so we take our trusty calculator 144 thousand dollars at 3.5 percent and that gives us $5,040 of interest, all right? That's what he's making, $5,040 of interest. How do I know that? Because I already calculated. I Trust me, I did not just think about it in my head. This lump of coal here can't do that. We're going to assume he's in an all-including income of 25% in the state and the feds, just for simplicity to make it simple. So when you factor in 25%, he's only netting 3780. All right, that's what he's netting in interest. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, 3780, we'll take it. But after taxes um, on that amount of money, he's netting 3780. Now, on the other hand, he's on, he's not getting a mortgage deduction. I can almost assure you that because he's on the 16th year of a mortgage and he only has, he's only paying 1.8. He's, he's only cost of 1500 bucks a month. So his interest on that is probably only uh, probably 500 bucks a month. So it's probably costing him six thousand dollars a year in interest payment. All right, six thousand bucks a year in interest, and I'm I'm assuming that's the case. I don't know. Five hundred bucks. He's paying fifteen hundred dollars a month. Five hundred is going to interest. A thousand is going to principal. That seems to make sense to me. So it's costing him six thousand dollars a month in interest. So he's actually not getting more um, in, in in interest than he's paying in interest at the bank, and that's not deductible. Let me get the dog. I should say it's not deductible. Most likely, it's not deductible because the standard uh, deductions and whatnot are so high now that most people aren't paying much of an interest, aren't getting hardly any interest deduction. In, fa in fact, I think I read only like I don't know. 8% of the population is using itemized deductions. All right, so he's only netting 3780 after taxes. He's paying roughly $6,000 a year in interest because, I, again, I'm making lots of assumptions here, but go with it. I just want to lay it for you to think about, huh, that, you know, that, that doesn't seem like a good deal. So he's paying $500 a month in interest, $1,000 a month of principal. That's a $1,500 a month payment. If Again, I'm just assuming that. I think I'm pretty close. And he's paying six thousand dollars a year in interest. So he's making thirty-seven eighty after taxes. He's paying six thousand. Part two of this, or part three, by the way, is that the interest is that the money he needs to generate the income in which to pay the taxes. He's got to earn eighteen thousand dollars tax-free in which to pay eighteen thousand dollars of payments. All right. Hope this makes sense. So he's got to make $18,000 of income. We're going to assume earn income. We're going to assume he's working. $18,000 of income in which to pay the $18,000 of, of payments. He's got to pay his mortgage, principal and interest. The $18,000, we're just going to assume he's not self-employed, a W-2 employee is going to cost how much? 7.65 in FICA. 0.65%. It's going to cost him $1,377. 
and we're going to go back and say 25% tax bracket for just simplicity, 18 minus 25%. And that's going to cost another, oops, 18,000 times 25%, 4,500. So that's 5,877. So it's going to cost him to make that 18,000, it's going to cost him $5,877. So he's got to basically make 24,000, give or take, in which to cover $18,000 of payments. He's got to make 24,000 to cover 18,000 of payments. Uh, you know, that's just not a good trade off. So not only is he paying more in interest on the 144, than he's actually, and again, because the interest payments are amortized over 30 years. I don't know his specifics. But he's also got to earn the income to pay the mortgage. This is the whole thing about imputed income, my friends. Understand it because it's such a critical thing. Imputed income simply means you don't have to earn an income to pay the mortgage. Thus, you don't have to pay taxes on the income in which to pay the mortgage. Thus, you don't have to go to work, maybe, to pay the mortgage. You don't have to take money out of a 401k. The income is imputed. It's tax-free. You have no mortgage. Pay the thing off, and then you don't have to worry about it. Now, he's still got another 156000 earning 3.5%. That's freaking awesome, dudes. But looking at it as simple as I'm getting 1.7, I'm getting 3.5, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm paying 1.8, you can't look at it like that because you got to look at it. You're not paying 1.8. You're paying on the monthly payment you've amortized over 30 years. And again, it's probably $500 a month in interest now. It might be $400 a month in interest next year. It might be $300 a month in interest the following year. But you just got to look at amortization schedule. And then you got to factor, are you taking a tax deduction on the itemizations? Probably not. If so, it's still not going to be much because your standard deduction is so high anyway. I mean, I mean, even if you're taking tax deductions, it really only going to be, what, a one or $2,000 deduction because your standard deduction is so high. Again, if you have an itemization of 30, we'll just say your standard deduction is, is 30000 just for simplicity. I don't do a standard deduction. I itemize because I got $32,000 of itemization. So that means you're only getting $2,000 of the interest write off because if you did nothing, just standardize, you would have got uh, $30,000 write off anyway. I, don't know. I just think people get way too uh, keen on this. Like I'm making three and a half uh, versus 1.8. I should go ahead and, and uh, keep the interest. I, I wouldn't do it. I'd just pay the thing off. Be done with it. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.